Today we are going to cover up. Uh, we will have a quick insight into emission and absorption spectra. Then we will be moving on to the line spectrum of hydrogen in detail. Okay, line spectrum of hydrogen in detail. And uh, as we have covered up uh, on the last one also. So we will be solving some questions on that. Okay. So basically, we will be doing some questions today. Yeah. So who has uh, who is left? Please be on time. Yeah. So Bohr model for hydrogen atom, and then we will be covering up line spectrum of hydrogen in detail, and then numericals. Okay. So uh, I'm audible to everyone, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let's wait for some more people to join. So can anybody tell me what we have learned uh, during last term? Bohr model of atom. Yeah, and Bohr model was given for each atom or for a particular atom. It was given for one electron species. It could be hydrogen. Particularly, it was given for hydrogen atom only, but it could be for one electron species like any example of hydrogen like atom any example come on quickly helium plus lithium 2 plus srinivasan how sodium how come sodium no one electron species i'm saying so Guna, shall we start or shall we wait for other people? Guna, can we start now? Okay. So let's you begin. Can, you can start. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh on the last one, we were doing Bohr's theory, yeah, and we have seen uh, several, several of uh, its postulates. Okay, so now the postulate number four, uh, in continuation with the Bohr's theory, what we have learned uh, during the last one, and quick revision is that that we learn how to calculate angular momentum, how to calculate radius, how to calculate energy of a particular orbit. And now we are moving on to uh, how to calculate energy in terms of atomic number. Okay, so Bohr theory, as I told you, that Bohr theory was given for ions containing one electron. That is why we can consider these ions, right? Helium plus helium is having atomic number two. Helium plus one electron it has lost. So how many electrons? It is having now one electron, so it is also like hydrogen like a species. Similarly, lithium with the uh, atomic number three, then it will lose two electron lithium two plus. Then also it becomes like hydrogen like a species. And similarly with beryllium. Okay, so it can be Bohr's theory can be applied to ions containing only one electron. So don't you think it is uh, quite a drawback of Bohr theory? What about the other elements? Yeah, so it is one of the drawbacks. Yes, it is one of the drawbacks. Okay, now what we learned that stationary states are these are the allowed stationary states. Okay, these are the states. It's what are stationary states? We learned that stationary states are the orbits actually which are allowed in which electron rotate around the nucleus in a concentric manner, isn't it? We saw it uh, during the last class. Yeah. 
so now the the energies of these stationary states can be obtained by the expression e n e n n means the particular orbit whatever orbit is, is it mm, uh, students what uh, when we will be doing quantum numbers now you will better understand all this what is n okay azimuthal and other quantum numbers for for the time we you can understand that n is any orbit n is any stationary orbit okay now its energy will be minus 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 z is square upon n square again n is that particular stationary orbit and z is the what atomic number or atomic mass quickly atomic number here we have written that is atomic number and this expression is for energy so its uh, uh, unit will be joule and the radii for, uh, by this expression what we obtain r and means the radius for that particular orbit will be 52.9 m square by z picometer it's in picometer okay now students tell me if i want to uh, calculate the radius for hydrogen so what will be that radius if we will put the values in this expression what it will come for hydrogen for hydrogen n will be we have to see the outermost electron is lying in which uh, stationary state so for hydrogen as it is having one electron only so the n value will be one so it will be one square and as its atomic number is z and its atomic number is 1 so we will keep 1 here also so what will be the bohr's radius or the hydrogen radius actually hydrogen radius is also known as bohr's radius okay so what will be the bohr's radius for hydrogen it will be 52.9 picometer itself yeah so now if we want to calculate for helium for lithium so what would be the value of z z will be 2 and 3 yeah so we will calculate accordingly okay so now you can see that in this expression the value of energy is negative isn't it so uh, anybody will tell me because i told you in a very detailed manner why the energy is taken as negative so can anybody brief me in just one line why what is the significance of this negative sign anyone who was present in the class and uh, or not clean water energy is absorbed energy is absorbed or energy is loosed clean water see what i told you that in a neutral if we talk about the neutral element uh if the nucleus is there an electron is just 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 far away from the nucleus okay let me make you understand because many people uh what i am saying many people are new in the class so let me again for let me uh, make you understand again that suppose this is the nucleus okay this is the nucleus so these are the concentric circles according to the bohr theory isn't it and there are so many uh, concentric orbits around the nucleus now if this is electron so this is near the nucleus okay fine this is near the nucleus this will be having some energy force of attraction isn't it now this nucleus is going away the force of attraction is uh, increasing or decreasing any idea decreasing yeah yeah increasing or decreasing decreasing ma'am it's decreasing it's decreasing very good shrinivasan so uh, it's decreasing now if i say that this is uh, somewhat at r distance but now if i am considering this distance to be far 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 away because i can't make here i cannot draw a uh, infinity distance i cannot show you we can just assume let's suppose this electron is now located at electron now located at infinity distance okay now this distance from the nucleus is infinity so will it be having any um, force of attraction with the nucleus no 
yeah very good thing was in everybody has to answer and everybody has to participate okay in the discussion this is not just a class it's a discussion also okay so this electron when it is at the distance of infinity from the nucleus it will not be having any force of attraction okay and as it will not be having any force of attraction its energy here will be considered as zero here the energy will be considered as zero okay now this is the maximum energy this electron is having now what i'm trying to say that if if this electron is stand let me change the color so that i can make you understand uh okay now if this electron is starting approaching to the nucleus uh what going on i don't understand what you are saying guna what are you saying uh i need to mention what okay so back to lecture if this electron if this electron is going towards the nucleus it will lose energy why because it is coming in under the influence of nucleus and when it is coming under the influence of nucleus it is at this stage it was having highest energy and when it is coming closer to the nucleus what it will do the energy is keep on rising see this energy the energy associated with n equals to 1 will be lesser than the energy in, uh, associated with n equals to 2 i what i mean to say is that the energy of the uh, second stationary orbit will be greater than the energy of the first uh, stationary orbit isn't it similarly energy of the third stationary orbit will be greater than the energy of the second stationary orbit are you getting means as the stationary orbit distance increases or as the quantum number increases the energy increases okay and it becomes at infinity e equals to zero means it become maximum now when we are coming closer to the nucleus then then it has to lose energy it has to lose energy because it will be going under the influence of nucleus it is going towards the nucleus and when it is going towards the nucleus it will emit energy it will emit energy isn't it it will lose energy what is the meaning of emission it is losing energy because it is coming from higher energy state it is going to lower energy state because the in, i am i haven't make orbits here but you can assume the orbits here also okay you can assume the orbits this, these are all orbits actually okay so from infinity it is coming to this uh, orbit or suppose this orbit or this orbit so what it is how it can come closer to the nucleus only after emission of energy and when it is emitting energy it is losing energy means its energy is getting decreased and when its energy is getting decreased then how will the electron will say that uh, my energy is decreasing no we have to express it we have to express it by some expression and that is where this negative sign is put to show that the energy is decreasing while coming uh, when the electron is coming near to the nucleus from the distance of infinity got it everyone got it or any confusion why what is the significance of this a negative sign yes srinivasan you got it and other people other people you got it what is the significance of this energy negative sign negative sign in the expression of energy you people must understand it this can be asked in some way or the other by the examiner okay so uh, fine so moving on to uh, the negative sign importance 
what i was willing to tell you that negative sign is put just to show the decrease in energy now from those equations which we have learned in the previous slide it is evident the value of energy becomes more negative and the radius become more smaller how the radius will become more smaller tell me how the radius will become more smaller when electron will come near the nucleus only then radius will become smaller okay and z will increase when z will increase when the atomic number will increase when the atomic number will increase the n value will increase and if the n value will increase then more is the energy emission more is the loss of energy to come closer to the nucleus it means that the electron will be tightly bound to the nucleus means with the increase of z the electron will be tightly bound to the nucleus so more is the value of z means the atomic number the radius becomes smaller this radius means this if this is nucleus then the radius become smaller okay for the larger atomic number the radius will become smaller and hence the electron will be tightly bound to the nucleus okay the next postulate associated with the bohr theory was that it is possible to calculate the velocity of electron okay the electrons are in continuous motion uh, around the nucleus okay so how to calculate the speed with which they are rotating so the speed can be calculated by the bohr theory so in short can you uh, tell me that which theory out of the dalton thomson and rutherford model and uh, various other model and including the bohr theory which is more advanced which theory was able to circumvent or to answer many of the drawbacks associated with the previous theories and it was uh, very much numerical in nature which theory was that of course it is bohr theory now because we understood that it was able it gives us the expression for energy for radius uh, for angular momentum and uh, uh, for uh, calculating the energy difference even and now the velocity also so it is more uh, we can say it, it is more qualitative uh, kind of theory okay but of course um, as it was associated just for one electron species so it was also uh, fall into the category of the drawbacks and then we had a, a quantum mechanical model which will be we will be taking up soon okay now for magnitude of velocity uh, it was uh, there was no such as such expression but he told what bohr uh, told that the magnitude due of velocity of electron increases with increases of positive charge on the nucleus means as the positive charge increases as the positive charge increases the velocity of electron increases okay means velocity of electron is directly proportional to the positive charge the increase of positive charge means if it is the lithium plus okay and if it is uh, beryllium 2 plus so which uh, uh, atom uh, electron is moving faster tell me and velocity is inversely proportional to the quantum number principal quantum number okay so principal quantum number we can say n not z but n okay so better right here 1 by n it is uh, inversely proportional to principal quantum number and directly proportional to the positive charge so if we look from this perspective it seems to have beryllium ha will have more velocity beryllium electron but if we see from this uh, perspective that quantum number if increases then velocity decreases so what is the quantum number of valence electron in case of beryllium it will be 2 isn't it and for lithium it will be 1 because for lithium the atomic uh, configuration will be because its atomic number is 
so it is lithium plus so it will be 1s2 2s1 okay and when it is lithium plus it will be 1s2 so lithium plus is having conjugation as 1s2 okay so what is the principal random number value 1 and for beryllium it is 1s2 2s2 okay and when 2 plus we will uh, lose two electron then it will be 1s2 so now we saw that for beryllium 2 plus the quantum number is 1 and for lithium plus the quantum number is 1 so this criteria same for both now we have to see from this criteria from this criteria beryllium is having two plus charge so the more the positive charge the more will be the velocity so the electron velocity will be more in case of beryllium okay so this is how we have to approach the question got it okay so now yeah so this i have told you already that what does the negative electronic energy for hydrogen atom mean so i have told you that e at infinity is zero and as the electron get closer to the nucleus em become larger okay and more and more negative means the value associated with that particular electron the energy will get decreases as the electron approach to nucleus okay so this was the significance now line spectrum of hydrogen if we will take up uh, line spectrum of hydrogen in detail so uh, we saw that we obtained some series what are those series quickly tell me what are the series what are the uh, different series we obtained in case of line spectrum of hydrogen yeah what are those series balmer lehman lehman balmer and pastel people yeah and only the balmer series is visible in this spectrum because it falls uh, in the visible range isn't it so if we take up the delta e value i told you in the last term that how we can calculate the delta e value means the change in energy in uh, uh, going from uh, final energy state level and the initial energy state level so this is the delta e expression we have learned it, uh, in during the last lecture so the frequency associated with the absorption and emission of the photon can be evaluated by this we saw in the last term this expression and now we have put it the value of delta e okay as this and we got the frequency as this okay 3.29 to 10 to the 15 where n1 and n2 are the initial and final quantum numbers that will be given in the question and actually these type of concepts are mainly get polished by doing the questions okay so we will be taking some questions okay this is the frequency in, in case of uh, in terms of wave number so in terms of wave number how we have to calculate by putting wittberg constant and uh, planck constant and uh, dividing it by velocity and and when and and ni and nf are the initial and final quantum number so what we are saying that in case of absorption spectrum how we obtain absorption spectrum when the electron get excited to higher energy state okay so there the nf value will be greater than ni and when the nf value will be greater than ni it means this value will be greater okay and if this value will be greater after solving this whole value will become positive and when this whole value will become positive the energy will energy value will become energy will we will say that if the energy value is coming positive it means the energy is absorbed and if ni is greater than nf that happens in the case of emission spectrum the energy difference will be negative okay and when the energy difference will be negative we will say that energy is released so the summary is if delta e comes out to be 
positive, then we will say that the, there is, it is the case of absorption spectrum. Energy is absorbed. Okay. So, in case of absorption spectrum, because from here questions are generally asked, the absorption spectrum, in case of absorption spectrum, NF will be greater than NI, and energy difference will be positive. So, if energy difference is positive, you will derive that absorption spectrum is obtaining. We are obtaining uh, absorption spectrum. And if delta E is negative, it means it is the case where energy is released and it is the case of emission spectrum. Okay? So I'm going to ask one question now. Okay? Actually, we will do questions. So let's first come to the uh, first question. Okay. Now get attentive because these questions you have to do. These are the questions we will be discussing, but the ma major participation will be yours. Okay. Now th this is the question. What will be the longest wavelength line in Balmer series of spectrum? If anybody will solve it, let me know how you are solving it. Yeah. Are you people solving it? Srinivasan. Try to solve it. Anybody? See, this is the case of Balmer series, okay? And Balmer series is obtained in the visible spectrum. And in the visible spectrum, I'm just giving you a hint, okay? In the visible spectrum, which wavelength is termed as longest wavelength? Okay, which color, which color is associated with the longest wavelength in case of visible spectrum. Tell me. You can at least answer this question. See, we have gone through this so many times. Ajit, very good. How can you explain? Ajit? Okay, so I have told you this concept that in the visible spectrum, these colors are obtained. Okay, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Okay, so these colors are arranged in the order of increasing wavelength or decreasing frequency. Decreasing frequency. Okay, so if I say which color is having longest wavelength, then what you will say? Which color? Of course, red. And which color is having shortest frequency? Of course, red. Okay, now as I told you that in the line spectrum of hydrogen, only Balmer series falls in the range of visible spectrum. Okay, visible spectrum. So it must be having these colors. And they are asking in the question, what will be the longest wavelength? So what is the longest wavelength here? You know that red light is absorbed at around uh, 650 or 700 nanometer. Yeah, because visible range is actually from 400 to 700. Yeah, 700 nanometer. Okay, 400 to 700 nanometer. Um, so this, uh, uh, the more appropriate option from these is 
656 is the highest comparable to other options. Okay, so you got it. You people understood it. Shall we move to next question? Okay. Now, I'm reading it for you. This is actually bracket. Of the following options are not correct. This is the same expectation students. You remember this expression? This is the same expression. What we learned in the today's class. Minus 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18. That is square upon n square joule. So this is the same expression from where they are asking question okay so based on this equation which of the following statements are incorrect see they are asking not correct so just go through the questions which are not correct okay so let us first understand the first question first option Srinivasan, okay, let's uh, find out uh, uh, what Srinivasan has answered. Any other person? Okay, let me read it. Equation can, the first option is, equation can be used to calculate the change in energy when the electron changes orbit. Is it true? This equation is used to calculate the change in energy when the electron changes orbit. Yeah, very good, Srinivasan. Now, because we understood now when we calculated it delta E, so we put it, shall I show you? We put it one by n uh, final and minus one upon n initial. So it is actually this, by this statement, we can calculate the difference in energy. Yeah, so first statement is correct. So let's find out uh, the statement number four. Okay, larger the value of n means quantum number, principal quantum number, the larger is the orbit radius. What they are saying? They are saying that if this is nucleus and this is n1, this is n2, this is n3. So you see, as the principal quantum number is increasing, the energy will also increase. That is why we say now that on going uh, to the infinity distance, this energy becomes maximum, and which is E is equal to zero. And while coming closer to the nucleus, its energy decreases. That is, I will take it in terms of negative. Okay, so. As we, uh, the quantum number is increasing, the so energy is increasing. So this is also seems to be true. Now, see uh, option number C. The negative sign in the equation simply means that the energy of electron bound to the nucleus is lower than it would be if the electrons were at the infinite distance from the nucleus. Just now I told you this statement. Yeah. So just go through this statement and you will realize that what we learned. Yeah, so they are also correct. Now option number B is left. For n equals to 1 means for principal point of number 1 means they are talking about hydrogen-like species. The electron has a more negative energy than it does for n equals to 6. Which means that the electron is more loosely bound in the smallest allowed orbit. Now you tell me, is it okay? Are they correct? 
because this was our last postulate of the Bohr theory. What I told you that when n increases, the electron bound to the nucleus more tightly, more tightly, okay, as the n increases. Yeah, so they are saying option B is false. Yes, Deepthi, very good. Kidana, uh, uh, why have you come so late? Seen wasn't tightly bounded in smallest allowed orbit. Yes. This is uh, this will be more loosely, not this will be more tightly. Yeah. Srinivasan, you are right. Kirtana, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yes. You got late. Sorry, but late. You got. Okay, we have done few numericals. Okay, now uh, we can proceed from here. Yeah. So, um, any other student? By by, uh, B seems to be incorrect because we have learned now in Bohr's theory it was the last postulate that the elect they are saying that for n equals to one the electron has more negative energy than it does for n equals to six. Now you see if n equals to six, see in this expression. This is n square. Okay, this is n square actually. Don't get confused. This is n square. Now, if I keep one here, then it will be like minus 2.178 uh, into 10 to minus 18 z square. Okay, and if I keep 6 here, then it will be 36, and 36 will be divided by minus. So, this will be more value or less value? It will be less negative value. And if it is less negative value, it means it is more value. Yeah. So, but they are saying opposite. They are saying that electron has more negative energy. Okay. So, they are actually wrong. So, B is not correct. Everybody understood? B is not correct. And... From this statement, it should be like more tightly, not more loosely. It should be more tightly bound in the smallest orbital because when the uh, and increases, when the quantum number increases, the electron gets more tightly bound to the nucleus, not more loosely bound. Okay, so everybody understood this question. First, tell me everybody understood so that I can proceed to the next question. Yeah, Srinivasan understood. Aisha Sanya understood. Deepi, okay. Everybody understood this question. Shall we proceed further? If not, tell me. I can take it up again. Chandana, very good. So let's do the next question. And yes, people, if you are having any doubt at any stage, it doesn't mean that uh, if uh, out of the uh, 10, if uh, uh, two people understood and eight didn't understood, then uh, we, are, we cannot take it up again. If even if uh, one person will not understood out of 10, then also I will take the question again. But after clearing the concept only, I want to proceed further. And I think we all want to proceed further after clearing one concept. Yeah? So please don't hesitate. If you didn't understand, just tell me. Okay? So... Next question. According to the Bohr theory, which of the following transient shoots in the hydrogen atom will give rise to the least energetic photo? Yeah.
Did you understand the question? According to Bohr theory, which of the following? First, understand the question. Don't rush through the options. Okay. Which of the following transition in the hydrogen atom? Three Vivasan. Okay. Let's let's take up. The question I will tell you okay whether you are right or not. So, which of the following transitions in the hydrogen atom will give rise to the least energetic photo? So, how will you decide it? How we will decide it? See, in the first option, it is n equals to 6 to n equals to 1. See, this is very important too. It will decide what is n equals to 1 and n equals to 2. Uh, what is n initial or what is n final. Okay. So, it is from n equals to 6 to n equals to 1. Now, if we consider the transitions like this. So, this way, this will be n equals to 1. This is 2. This is 3. This is 4, this is 5, and this is simply 6. So they are saying n from n6. Yes. Yes, Srinivasan. Very good. Very good. So um, n equals to 6. From n equals to 6, the electron is coming to n equals to 1. So what is n initial? What is an initial? It is 6. Okay. And what is an final? It is 1. Okay. Now, what we saw in the expression, what we saw that delta E change in energy is directly proportional to 1 upon and one is square minus one upon n two square. Where n, or you can say n initial and n final rather. Okay, this is n final. Okay, from where this expression came? See, I told you this expression. This is the expression, okay? This uh, delta E, yeah. See, this is the expression here. So I'm just telling you that change in energy is directly, this is our expression. So change in energy is equal to so N uh, initial, this is minus minus will get plus. So this will be plus, this, this will come here. So, 1 upon an initial square minus 1 upon n final square. This is the final expression, what we got here. Okay. So, this was the expression from which the question will be solved. Okay. Yeah. So, this was the expression because it, it was like uh, minus 2.18 something. And but this is directly proportional to this n initial minus n final. Now, if n initial is 6 and n final is 1. So what I told you in the last uh, postulate that if this is the case of absorption spectrum or emission spectrum, first tell me. See, electron was in higher energy state and it is coming to lower energy state. So how it can come to lower energy state after emitting its energy? Because it was having high energy and want to come to the stable state, to the ground state. So it will lose energy. And it will lose in energy. It means it will, it will emit energy. So it will be give, it will give the emission spectrum. So this is the case of emission spectrum. So this is the first thing we clear. Now, if this is the case of emission spectrum, then n final value is less. And if n final value is less because it is 1, so it will, the uh, whole term will become negative. And when the whole term will be ne become negative, this means that energy difference will be negative. And when the energy difference was negative, 
it means that the energy is released which is true also because if uh, the electron will lose energy then only it can come to the ground state and acquire more stability okay so the energy will come in this case negative okay now they are asking least uh, will give rise to the least energetic photon means least energy so uh, from where least energy can come the difference is too much here but if we see here then it will be n5 to n4 so 4 will come here it will also be negative but the difference is not that much negative means the total values will not be that much negative so it means it is in this case only because in other cases you see the difference is much in case of n equals to 6 to n equals to 1 this is much then compared to this this is uh, having the difference of two this is having the difference of one but yeah in b or c how we will decide because the, this is also having a difference of one this is also having a difference of one so how we will decide now tell me how we will decide from b and c from this and this how which is correct this is also having difference of one. This is also having difference of one. But if you will solve this now, you will get what? This is final now. So 4, 4, 16 minus 25. And this will be like uh, uh, 25 minus 36. So this, the difference will be more in this case. Means delta E will come out to be more than here. And they are asking about the least. Least energetic so the least energetic will be this yes really Martin. good so the least energetic will be when the electron will jump from n equals to 5 to n equals to 4 rather than n equals to 6 to n equals to 5 so this will this will be the transition which is having least energetic proton Okay. Shall we move to the next question now? Everyone understood this? Okay. Ajit, did you understand? Ajit, are you there? Ajit, are you there? Kirtan, are you solving questions or not? Because you missed some lecture now today. So maybe not getting. Isn't it? Okay. Okay, okay, Kirtan. So let's moving on to the next question. The energy of second Bohr orbit of the hydrogen atom is minus 328 kilojoule per mole. And hence the energy of fourth Bohr orbit would be. You are given the second Bohr orbit energy and they are asking about the fourth energy orbit they are asking about the fourth orbit and second orbit energy is given how you will do it any idea Okay, Kirtana, I don't know the answer. We will solve it. Any other person is solving? How we will solve this question? 
yeah how we will sort this question see we know that energy yes yes very good kirtana we know that en is equals to en is having some uh, value here which is minus 2.18 you remember that value but for the sake of doing this question i'm just taking that value as k you remember that uh, equation here we were having 2.18 in renman uh, some value it was there so i am taking it as a constant because i don't need this value because this is this uh, see students whenever you will do the comparable question na no problem ajit but make sure students that when you are uh, coming for the class na make sure that you are okay okay uh, srinivas i will check it out yeah so make sure that you are doing the question uh and you are doing the class without any instruction be it network issue or be it the laptop issue yeah because you, it will hamper na no? it will hamper your uh, concept okay so it is minus k and what was there it was atomic number and here it is principal quantum number we will take the all the quantum number in detail okay so this is z upon n whole square and this is minus k and why have been taken this value as a value now this is the value for general okay now if i take this value for second orbit then it will be like e is equals to for second orbit it will be e2 okay because they are talking of second orbit in first case okay so this is the first case i'm discussing this is the first case so e2 will be minus k and for hydrogen atom they are talking so that will be 1 and what is n for hydrogen atom this is also 1 whole square no problem okay so it is minus 28 kilo joule now they are saying that they are talking about second mole orbit so we cannot take n equals to 1 because if they haven't talk about second now if they haven't mentioned then we will take n equals to 1 for hydrogen of course but they have mentioned second orbit so we will take this as 2 okay now clear so this is 2 and this is whole square means this is whole square here not two this is complete square okay now if they are asking for e is equal uh, for orbit number 4 isn't it they are asking for orbit number 4 and this is we also same because whenever the whenever uh, we are uh, dealing with the questions which are comparable in nature means they are asking for third okay kitten i will see which is uh, correct option but you have uh, uh, calculated in electron volt now kitna you, know, you have to check it in close joule per mole okay check it out so uh, if we are doing the comparable question means they are asking for they have given for first they are asking for second or they have given for second they are asking for third so we will take uh, only the different uh, the values which are different in nature the same values are can serve so we don't go into much uh, uh, you know we don't put all the values because they are not needed they will cancel it out okay so here we will keep z because it is hydrogen atom again it will be one and this is for fourth so we will keep here fourth square okay now when you will solve it now then you will get here you will put one then you will get the value for e4 as this will this value is what this value they have given as 328 okay this value is 328 this value they have already given okay 
Now, what we can do, what we will do, that we can find out the k value from here. Okay, because this is 328. This is 328 or rather minus 328. Minus 328 kilojoule per mole. So now minus will get cancelled from minus. So k is 328. Okay. Now we will put this k as 328. We put it here. 328. Okay. 328 and will be like minus here. Because minus is this, this minus, not this minus. Okay. So minus 1 by 4 square means 16. So what we will get? What we will get? It will be this k value will be 4 into 328 is and this will be 1. Okay. How 4? Because E is 328 and here n is 4. See here 2 square is 4. So we will cross multiply it for getting the value of k and here we will get k value yes we yes we was very good so what is the answer then answer is minus 82 clo joule per mole either now you got it you have to calculate the answer in the same unit in which the examiner is asking we cannot calculate ourselves like in electron volt okay so this will be the answer yeah so everyone understood because uh, we will do the question uh, more question we have more question in the uh, next term and uh, because we have taken up the line spectrum also uh, in details so we will be covering very soon the final uh, uh, model which is the quantum mechanical model and it is having uncertainty principle. They're all rules, home rule, polys, exclusion principle. As in, and uh, we will be taking up various quantum numbers because there are so many questions now from that uh, section uh, which are being uh, asked uh, since uh, recently, since recent years. Okay, so you have to present in the future classes. You have to be more sincere in the uh, future classes okay and first of all we will do the uh, rest questions because some questions are still left we haven't taken up the complete questions because of the time limit but uh, during the next class we will do the remaining question and then we will be taking up some theoretical part also okay so any query from today's class any query from today's class No query. So Bohr's theory, here we have completed the Bohr's theory. Now we know how to calculate the energy difference, the energy itself, the velocity. At least we are not having the full expression for calculating the velocity, which we will be learning in the uncertainty principle in the next class. But we are having some idea about the how, uh, how the velocity varies. Yeah, it was one of the postulate. And uh, uh, we have done uh, how to calculate the radius and uh, uh, how to calculate the angular momentum. So, so many parameters we are able to calculate by the Bohr's theory. But of course, as it was also uh, uh, having some limitations and what were those limitations for which the quantum mechanical model was given, we will be taking it up in the next class. Okay, so do practice question. And yes, if you people are having any question of yours, your question, you can ask it in the class or you can drop it. Uh, we will take it up uh, and discuss it in the class. Okay, so thank you students for attending the class. Happy learning. Thank you, sweet.